for our vision, they condemned us for the sin of seeing clearly what our father, their precious emperor, had become. But now, my sons, now there shall be a reckoning. The Primarch of the 14th Legion. We'll be right back. Hello again, Tabletop Warriors, and welcome back to the Plague Den. My name's Tony. This is my continuing video series where we explore the 40K universe one model at a time. If you enjoy this video, please consider subscribing for more videos just like it. As the quote implies from the book earlier, today's model is going to be Mortarian, the Primarch of the 14th Legion, Mr. Sirius himself. And I gotta be honest, I've waited to do this video because I'm not a fan of Mortarian. The model is great. I think uh, in the 40K tabletop gaming world, I think he's great, but I'm a big fan of Typhus and I know they hate each other. So in the Mortarian versus Typhus, uh, pick your side. I'm firmly on Typhus's side. So I've kind of waited. I know that makes me a bad person, but we're gonna talk about him. We're gonna talk about his stats. We're gonna talk about some tactics. Uh, we're gonna talk about the points and, and how you can use them in your Death Guard army to make it better. Uh, and we're gonna go right at it. So starting out, let's talk about his weapons. Obviously, uh, he has the Lantern Pistol, the one shot, three damage, minus three AP, strength eight. Uh, you make the hit roll against your target and everything within that 18 inch line from him. Uh, you get to roll wound against each model. Uh, it's a great weapon, uh, but it only, does only do the one, it is only the one shot, so uh, keep that in mind. His second weapon, the Silence, the giant scythe that he uses as a weapon, uh, it has the reaping scythe profile and the eviscerating blow profile which basically the reaping scythe profile is for tar pits or big mobs and the eviscerating blow is for individual targets there's not much that there, there's not much that can get in the way of mortarian he hits 97 percent of the time if you make him your warlord he's he takes the uh arch contaminator warlord trait which lets him reroll wounds on play weapons so between hitting 97% of the time and the fact that he's strength eight with the eviscerating blow strength 16, he's going to hit and wound just about everything, especially when you put the rerolls in. So the key is not, and as everybody knows, if you just read the rule book, that he is absolutely fantastic in melee and that's where you want to get him as quickly as possible. He will eat up other characters. He will eat up other HQs. Um, and he should for 470 points, a super heavy Primarch. Uh, he's he's awesome. And then he's got his auras with his minus one toughness aura and his uh, Primarch ability of rerolling ones to hit uh, for friendly units. Um, and then he has the four plus and vulnerable save and he blows up uh, on his last wound if, on a four plus. Uh, he's just a beast in combat. And there's no really, there's really any argument about that. Um, like I said, you're paying the 470 points it really is not much that he, I mean, he can even, because he's got the fly ability, he can even take down uh, your opponent's flyers like Storm Ravens and, and everything else. So there isn't much that he can't do when it comes to melee. Now, the key to Mortarian is, obviously, you want to play him in a bigger unit. You want to play him in a bigger game where you are playing more points, uh, 1750, 2000, 2500. Uh, the more points you're playing in, obviously, the better he gets. Um, but the more points you're playing in, the better he gets, the more likely he is to shot off the board turn one. But the key to him is you're spending 475, 470 points. You've got to get him through that first turn and you've got to get him into combat. So let's talk a little bit about how you do that. One is you can put him with the Death Shroud Terminators uh, and then he, he can put his wounds that he receives on them until they're gone, which is one way. But then that's another huge, I think, 180 point uh, sink to put in. So now you've got, you know, another 180 points plus the 470 sunk into this little uh, Death Star unit, which isn't a bad idea, but the higher points you play, the easier that gets. I mean, if you're into the 2,500 um, point game, then that becomes easier. But it also becomes easier for your opponent to have more shooting, the more points in the game that you're playing. So keep that in mind. I think if you're playing any kind of uh, uh, friendly local games where you're playing against people in your local gaming store or whatever, Death Shroud Terminators are the way to go. Especially if you don't want to start mixing in other um, other factions. Like if you don't want to take uh, Black Legion or just Thousand Sons or, or anything else to kind of, because the other step is to give him warp time. Figure out a way to bring a sorcerer in to give him warp time and then he moves across the board 24 inches and he can get into that assault much earlier. So if you take 
the demon prince from the index he has access to the chaos space marines psyker abilities and he can give him more time which gets him across the board so i think those are your really choices you put him with the death shroud terminators that he can put uh, wounds on or you bring somebody to give him warp time so he can get across the board early or you bring him with the death it depends on what you think like if you think you can make it to turn two without getting shot off the board you're playing an army that hasn't had a lot of shooting and they can't take all 18 moons from them then then wing it or bring the death shroud terminators in uh to protect him from deep strike because obviously once he starts moving his 12 inches and his uh, his charge range and all that those death shroud and their cataphracty armor are not no way going to keep up so you got to take all that in consideration and you and if you're going to take him build your army around him i think that is the key to being successful with mortarian is building your army around him taking those death shroud terminators figuring out different ways to support him he does get to cast uh psychic abilities he knows three he gets to cast two and he gets to deny three times so with his psyker ability, I think you should focus on protecting him. Miasma, Pestilence, uh, and Putrescent Vitality are both pretty much my consideration would be the only two psyker abilities I would give him. Because Miasma Pestil Pestilence is at minus one to hit. Putrescent Vitality ups his uh, toughness and his strength. Uh, instead of strength, toughness seven, he becomes toughness eight, which just makes him that much harder to wound. And the Miasma takes away the minus one to hit. So he's a little bit harder to take down in that first and he can cast those on himself. You, you don't have to really rely on having another Psyker close. When it comes to the offensive uh, Psyker abilities, obviously he does very well with play, Blades of Putrefaction, especially on the Eviscerating Blow uh, profile of Silence. So Blades of Putrefaction is a great um, Psyker ability to put on him if you have some other Psykers and you definitely want to have some at least another one other Psyker with him to, uh, to cast some offensive uh, spells on him to make him that much better in combat or, or or whatever the case may be so another good tactic is uh if you uh have any demons to put with them so if you bring like a uh, herald of nurgle cast psycho abilities fleshy abundance is really good uh doing those extra getting those extra wounds back every turn keep him alive get him through turn one also the brilliant blessing which gives him a plus one on his wounds and if you roll a, a seven plus it gives uh double damage so stacking things like Blaze of Putrefaction and the Brilliant Blessing from uh, like a Herald of Nurgle and you have another Psyker, a Death Guard Psyker, it makes him just ridiculous when it comes to wounding, um, getting double damage on every 7+. Plus. plus, if they happen to be Imperium on the hit rolls, you're getting Death to the False Emperor, which you're re-rolling for every roll of 6+, uh, and he's already attacking 18 times. It, it, it really just can get incredibly uh, messy when it comes to how powerful he is against infantry but again key 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 plan your work and work your plan keeping him alive through turn one so that he can get to where he needs to be to get into combat getting him into combat is key so whether it be death route shroud terminators or bringing a demon prince uh from the index that gives him more time or bringing a chaos detachment that has psychers that can give him more time or bringing a demon detachment that has psychers that can give him that fleshy abundance, um, or just playing against an army that you think you can get him there, turn one before he loses his 18 wounds, uh, is is the key to the game. It's the key to whether he is going to completely dominate the other army or get shot off the board turn one and you lose 470 points. So when it comes to his competitive play, that is the key to his competitive play. One of the reasons why you don't see him in a ton of competitive lists, and I'm not saying none, I'm not saying zero competitive list, some people do play them, is that some competitive pro players, or not even pro players, but competitive players that are really in the math and crunching numbers and doing all the math hammer have pretty much figured out that his success on the battlefield comes down to your luck on the 50-50 four plus invul save. So if you can roll a lot of invul saves, turn one and save them, or you can roll a lot of disgusting the resilience, turn one and somehow save them, then He's great. When you get him into turn two, the tide of the battle changes. The problem is, is against Astra Militarum, Tau, Eldar. They have so much shooting and their ability to blow him off the board turn one is so great that if you went to a tournament and those are your first three armies, you're going to have a bad day. But 
if competitive play is not your thing and you want to play with your friends and you want to bring Mortarian because you like them and you have the model and you paid for it and you painted it, then play with them all you want. But think about those other strategies that we talked about in, in terms of, like I said, Death Shroud, Warp Time, getting him some protection to get him through turn one and, and turn two even in the case of if he can't get into the assault. And the other kind of tactic to think about is using him to the best of his ability. You may want to move him up as far as you can, but you also may want to consider trying to keep him a little bit out of range so that they have to move their vehicles. If you can make them move their vehicles and come a little bit closer to the rest of your army, you kind of use him as a little bit of bait, then that's a tactic too. But planning the rest of your contingent, the rest of your army around his capabilities and what he can bring to the battlefield is the important thing. If you're going to sink 470 points into a, a Death Star type unit, or you're going to add the Death Star, which is another 180 points, then the rest of your army needs to be centered around that to make good on what you've kind of invested in. Because if you're just willy-nilly taking units and you take 470 point Martarian and the rest of his army, the rest of your army really doesn't support him, or the rest of your army is Poxwalkers and Typhus and they're, they're doing their own thing, then when he gets blown off the board, you, you really kind of, uh, you, you really kind of didn't have a plan there. So make it sure that you have a plan. Uh, and really, like I said, his stats and stuff speak for themselves. I mean, he is awesome. You can get him into combat, he take down anything. I mean, with the second profile, this is looking at like 16 strength. I mean, he's ridiculous, um, but he is a shooting magnet. So those are my thoughts on uh, Mortarian. I like him as a unit. I've, I've really thought about uh, uh, different ways that you can use him. I, I know I've kind of done some research as how he's used competitively, um, but those are kind of my thoughts on when, you, when and where you might use him and some things that you could do to keep him alive. So. If you guys are using him and you've got some different ideas or some different tactics that you're using him to keep him alive through turn one and even turn two or some different ways that you can make him even more effective in combat, um, please comment down below and let me know. So thanks again for watching guys. And like I said, if you like this video, please consider subscribing for more videos from the Plague Den uh, and send me a like if you could. But until next time, this is Tony saying to win all your battles in life and on the tabletop, we'll see you guys later. Mm -hmm.